You know that eating healthy will add years to your life. But did you think about how it can add life to your years? Welcome to your functional nutrition and the wellness lifestyle series with me. My name is Natalie Garcia. I'm not only going to be your guide through this wellness series. I specialize in mindfulness-based eating and I am a living awareness practitioner. It's quite a mindful. But when we put it all together, after all, we are going to be talking about what we put in our mouth. I know the cutting edge nutrition science and I have really dedicated my life to live by it. I am the person who is going to help you be a healthier way of being you. Are you feeling exhausted, overwhelmed, or disconnected from your body? Do you find yourself eating mindlessly on foods like chocolates or chips or turning to toxic foods or substances or unhealthy vices such as alcohol or drugs to cope with difficult emotions? Do you ever find yourself eating out of boredom and really not knowing what you're truly hungry for? If you're not in your head right now, yes, know that you're not alone. I've been there myself, numbing myself with food, chocolate being my favorite, or unhealthy substances and feeling trapped in vicious cycles, or taking part in something that is just temporarily satisfying. I used to use food to numb difficult emotions, and a lot of people do. What if you could identify what you are truly in need in that moment and make conscious choices without the guilt, the shame, or reaching for the potato chips just out of habit, or the ice cream or the alcohol. It's a tough cycle to break, but I'm here to help you identify what you are truly hungry for. By understanding the root causes of your habits and developing healthier coping mechanisms, we can not only prevent disease, but enhance the quality of our lives. So when you get diagnosed with a condition, that being diabetes, autoimmune disease, depression, or maybe there are symptoms like not being able to think straight or feeling a lot of pain or feeling not yourself, that is how toxicity and disease appears. And I'm here to share with you the awareness that you are like a plant and that when somebody just looks at the symptoms or when you're diagnosed with that condition, that that's not all there is. We need to look at these systems that are driving the condition. And these systems are very complex and they're fascinating. And what's important to know and work at is rebalancing these complex systems that communicate with each other and make them optimize so that disease does not appear. What is also very important to look at is one of the systems that tends to be really underlooked and that is the mind and the body connection. Throughout these 10 series, we will be talking about gastrointestinal disease and how the gut is connected to your brain and your mood and your immune system. We will also be talking about how to prevent and reverse diabetes throughout all of these amazing systems. Though as the basis and to establish habits, I need you to understand that if you want to change your life, it's important to know your habits, we are aware of them, 
and also know what you want to do about it. When we look at the root causes of these systems, we tend to see a lot of different things that is under our control. And I say this because sometimes when we get diagnosed with a condition or we're feeling certain symptoms and we don't feel well, we feel hopeless. And I'm here to empower you and let you know that if you look at the root causes, you are in control on how much food you eat, the sleep you get, the movement you're able to get in a day, as well as experiencing and opening the door to awareness, which we will we'll be focusing on today. Also focusing on meaning in love, work, and play, which play a crucial role in our health. So throughout my experience, I've discovered that there are many types of hunger and nourishment, and that's what I'm here today. And I hope that by the end of this show, you'll have a better understanding of why nourishing the part that it's in need is so important. Let's get started and help you figure out what is it that you're truly hungry for. One of my favorite quotes is the following, between stimulus and response, there's a space. In that space is our power to choose our response. In that response lies our growth and our freedom. This was written by Viktor Franklin and he was a Holocaust survivor and he's a very known well psychologist. And I connect and want to share this with you as you are starting to take this journey in creating and crafting health for yourself by starting to look at our habits. We tend to live in a world where we feel really overwhelmed. There's so much going on. There's a lot of mind and life busyness. And it's very hard to listen to ourselves because there's so much going on. And therefore, I invite you to have and practice an informed choice responding positively to a trigger rather than reacting. That can be really, truly life-changing, especially when you're trying the way you go about your day-to-day -day eating choices and lifestyle choices. Let's talk about and get started with the different types of hunger and nourishment, starting with the physical body. Did you know that our amazing human bodies need more than just nutrient-dense foods? This physical body, this meat suit here, needs more than the proper balance of food, water, shut eye, movement, rest, and relaxation. Science has shown that the number one reason why our physical body sickens is because of stress. Stress is debilitating. It's harmful to our performance, whether that be an athletic performance, brain performance, it's harmful to our health and it depletes us and leaves us just exhausted. And we know that everybody has stress. The question is how do we manage that stress? And it's up to us to manage how that stress takes us over as we take care of our physical body. The goal is to learn how to respond to stress rather than react to stress. When stressed, do you find yourself turning around for food or unhealthy vices to just feel better? You're not alone. A common trigger for many of us is having a very long day at work and feeling stress in our body. Why? Because maybe we had a long day at the office, there's a lot on your to-do list and you've been feeling stressed. The common trigger is opening the refrigerator when you get home from work and downing three beers or four, a slice of cheese and a bag of chips. A positive response is nourishing the body and releasing the tension through whatever works for you. Something that is very effective is movement. Movement is one of the best ways to release the tension. And personally, 
I take care of my physical body by activities such as playing tennis, swimming in the open water, or just playing with my dog. These activities release tension and stress and prevent me from turning to food when I know that that is really not what I need. I invite you to start your day with daily movement and ending it with a proper bedtime routine because this can set the tone for a more balanced and fulfilling life. It is important to know what works best for you. And on that note, I want to take a look at your hunger and become aware of your hunger. If you look at the scale, it's important for you as you make changes to look at where you are on the scale. As you can see, it goes from one to a 10. Number one is where you may not feel um, not full nor empty. You feel comfortable. As the scale moves to the three, four, and five, you may be feeling you have a good mood, but as it goes further through the six and seven, you may be feeling a little bit of discomfort, some hunger pangs, or just a gurgling sound. Now, as it moves towards the nine and the 10, that's when we start feeling achy, irritable, craving foods, thinking about foods, and it's what's gonna happen. We are more likely to grab, right, what we're craving, that is because we have allowed yourself to become overly hungry or when we're eating, you may eat excessive amount of food because of not checking in where you are on the scale. I invite you to, when before you eat, check in and on your hunger level and see where you're at, at the beginning, in the middle, and also before you finish your meal because guess what? Most likely you'll realize that the number changed and you may think about finishing the plate or not. And that will dictate how well you feel on what you ate. At the same time, I want to introduce you to the fullness scale and to recalibrate your full. I help a lot of folks who are on high blood pressure medication, diabetic medication, or who are just feeling over, overweight and really not comfortable in their own skin. And we talk about what fullness means to them. And many of them tell me, you know, I know that I notice I stop eating only when I'm fully distended, but I feel so bloated and uncomfortable that I really know I need to do something about this. So as you look at the scale and to recalibrate your full, if you know you're eating excessively, we would wanna check in in the beginning at the meal in the middle and also at the end, because we want to avoid feeling uncomfortable, but also the guilt and the shame that comes from overeating or eating certain foods without feeling like we have control. And I'm here to empower you and tell you that you do have control. Now let's move on and talk about the emotional body. Are you aware of which sets of emotions show up for you on a regular basis? How do you cope when you're feeling in distress, how often do you neglect your emotional needs and push them aside only to have them resurface in another form of distress? It is important to recognize the emotions that predominate in our lives, whether those be positive or negative emotions, and find ways to nourish ourselves emotionally. It's crucial to know that our emotional body needs the proper balance of positive and negative emotions. It is even of more importance to harvest more positive emotions in order to energize and power up the brain. So how can we nourish ourselves emotionally in moments of distress? The goal is to amplify the positive emotion and better handling the negative. Positive emotions improve brain function, resilience, and health. Meaning, when life throws stuff at us, we're better equipped to handle that. Research shows that positive emotions and harnessing those positive emotions makes a positive impact in our health, helping the nervous system, immune system, and our hormonal systems to be really working well and ultimately delay chronic disease and early death. As you consider this, and we talk about the emotional body, I invite you to take a look at a common trigger, which can be feeling angry or frenzied. Frenzied is very common 
because of the overwhelm. And what you probably don't know is that an overdose of anger and frenzy really impacts your focus. So the common reaction tends to be acting out on food and that leading to binge eating or binge drinking or anything else that makes you feel guilty and not happy with yourself. So how do we deal with negative reactions? A positive response is to observe the emotion. It's there for a reason, given a name as it knocks on your door. This high anxiety, high anger, accept that it's there, experience it without getting too involved in it, appreciate it, connect with it, have compassion that you're a human being that has emotions and that is experiencing anger or frustration. That is being curious. And then learn because that emotion showed up for a reason and it has a purpose. Once you've gone through these steps, we would want to change the channel. And how do we do that? We do that by learning how to self-soothe ourselves without food, or toxic substances or vices, and rather engaging in an activity that brings you comfort, laughter, love, and joy. This brings me to the next topic that I tend to see a lot in practice and is, am my heart hungry? And this is from Anne Green Roth in her book, When Food is Love. When love is food, and I've been looking for love in food all this time, how do you give love to yourself from within rather than outside? How can you make a nourishing choice for your heart? These are all good questions to ponder and realize that an emotional need may not be being met. And therefore, I want to talk to you about emotions and what the purpose is. As we experience sadness, anxiety, or anger, these are strong emotions and they come up because emotions are biological messengers from our genes. We all have a different genetic set. Your emotions are going to be different from my emotions, but it's important to know that negative emotions signal unmet needs. And we want to welcome those messengers, those emotions, not shoot the messengers. Having that in mind, I want to welcome you to ask yourself, what need do I have? that may not be being met. And the common unmet needs that all human beings tend to have at any moment in time are the following. You may not be feeling confident. You may not feel in control. You may feel like you can't solve a problem. You may feel unrested and unbalanced, like you are performing under the standard and also not feeling supported or that you're just not having fun. When you become aware of all this, it's important to not judge yourself. Just be curious about why is it that you may feel like you're not having fun or why is it that you may not feel not unrested? It could be that you're just really spread thin and going from one task to the other. So what do we do? We engage in a head to heart conversation, which is asking yourself, what need do I have that may not be met? It could be, do I need rest? Do I need to recharge? Do I need a nourishing breath? Do I need reflection time? Do I need to connect with a loved one, with nature or with myself? Do I need distraction? Or do I just need to give myself a hug and acknowledge the emotion that I'm experiencing? After you have identified the need that you may be in need of, then ask yourself how and when might I need this need. Personally, I acknowledge my emotions. I also take a deep breath. On the way in, I tell myself I'm breathing in peace. And on the way out, I am peace. Now let's move on to the psychological body. This body encompasses your thoughts, feelings, and awareness. Are you aware of your inner dialogue? The kinds of thoughts that keep coming up in your mind and how you engage with these thoughts? It is so important to be aware of our thoughts and how these impact our day-to-day -day routines. 
we also want to know how to approach ourselves with curiosity and understanding rather than judgment. Are you taking time to nourish your psychological body or are you just on autopilot? The norm is going through the days without really taking the time to be intentional and present to take care of the nourishment of our entire bodies. We tend to focus on getting the next deadline done, the next era done, the next project done without really the awareness of all that is happening and nourishing ourselves. Now, a common trigger that I tend to see is this inner dialogue that we have. We can experience a lot of frenzy and a lot of energy can be drained by engaging in this inner dialogue. I'm pretty sure you know what I mean, but it's when a part of yourself talks to yourself and say, I, you're not doing good enough. And a little part of yourself, no, yes, you're doing well enough. And it's this tug of war that can be super draining. Therefore, the common reaction tends to be being and eating on autopilot. Maybe you're in the car commuting from one place to another and you're just eating and eating or you're in front of the TV and you are engaged in your thoughts, not even on the TV show, but you're just eating without realizing all that you've consumed and you're judging yourself. Now, a positive response example is to bring yourself to the present and be in the moment. How can you do that? Not letting yourself get too caught up in your thoughts and telling yourself, I am here now, and this can bring you back to the present and outside of the entangled thoughts in your head. It's really crucial to take a step back and not let our thoughts control our emotions and our actions. Now let's move on and meet our social body. The social body needs to nourish social connections and positively respond to these. I invite you to acknowledge quality of your connections and also know that these have a huge impact on your overall well-being. Do you find yourself struggling with loneliness or how do you feel about your time in solitude? Now, a common trigger that I tend to see, and this also involves myself, the feeling of loneliness. The common reaction is not taking care of ourselves or looking for connection and interaction with food, whatever that may be. It could be that we engage in eating just to feel better and feel connected because that's all we know. It could be that we just want to feel better and we know that drinking something sugary will make us feel better, but that is only lasts for just a second. What to do to nourish the social body and a positive response is to really spend quality time with a friend or partner, and if they're not available, to engage in nature. This can really help you feel fulfilled and supported. Something that research really is amazing about showing is that share positive emotions improve health. I invite you to experience, savor, harvest, enjoy, and amplify the positive emotions because that way these will last longer in you and therefore positively impact your health. Take a moment to appreciate and savor because what you appreciate, appreciates. So far, we've been talking about nurturing our different bodies for overall well-being. The intellectual body is no exception as our desire to learn and grow is an integral part of being human. What ways can we explore to feed our intellect and stimulate our minds, curiosity, and quest for understanding? It can be super challenging to find ways to nourish this particular body, especially when we're so used to turning for food as the habit whatever food that may be, even healthy food. We are craving stimulation and food is something that we can see, we can touch, we can feel in our lips, we can smell, we can feel in our mouth and in our stomach. So it's important to recognize that the more senses we 
engage in our experience, the more drawn we'll be to experiencing those experiences. So it is very challenging to find ways to nourish this body because it's looking for engagement and stimulation, but there's plenty of ways to do this. The typical trigger that I tend to see is feeling bored and really craving stimulation. The common reaction is craving for something sweet at the end of the day and after dinner. The, that being chocolate, eating the entire bar, even though we say we're just gonna eat one square, could be eating ice cream and instead of just having a bowl, having the whole pint. Why? Because we are wanting to be stimulated and food has become the learned habit. And because you may not be aware that reaching for food or any substance is the instant gratification, that can become the habit and set your health in a downward spiral. You can change this once you have the awareness of this and many other habits and behaviors that are hindering your health and that have you on five medications, feeling sick, fat, and tired. I invite you to learn a new skill, whatever that is. You can also decide to engage your mind by watching a documentary, picking up a book, or learning a new hobby or a project. Whatever it is that you know you are engaging in and know that you are feeding this body by just tuning into this show. Now it's time to move on from the intellectual wisdom to another very special part of us that makes us human. This is the creative body. And I have a little passion when I talk about this body because I personally resonate with this body. As we nourish this creative body, we allow ourselves to experience a state of flow, which allows us to experience joy and play. This state is a total opposite to the stress response. Now, the very common trigger is being worried in over our heads, not being present. And therefore, there's no room for experiencing the flow state because we're just not there. So how can we develop a daily routine where you can experience being in an absorbing creative activity that helps you engage your inner self and that brings you more joy in your life? It can be whatever works for you. I just know that the common reaction without this integral part is eating mindlessly in front of the TV. A lot of people tell me, well, you know, I'm eating healthy, but at the end of the day, I grab a bowl of cereal because it's just what I do and I just can't seem to lose weight and my blood sugar continues to go up and it's not until we get into the nourishment of all of our bodies that they realize oh yeah this is something that I really need to cultivate and that I want to cultivate because it's not part of my life. So a positive response and again this is very independent to all of you. It could be engaging in a sport. When you're in a sport, you can't be thinking about other things because you got to be present to make the shot or to really do the best. It can be painting. It could be dancing. I don't know if you guys dance or not, but dancing is fun. It brings joy. It brings connection. So I invite you to find what works for you. Whatever it is, feeding our creative body can bring you a sense of fulfillment that food cannot match. Just by listening to the show and getting more creative in the kitchen with cooking, creating healthy new recipes, you are engaging this creative body. As we continue to explore the different aspects of our bodies, we've come to the spiritual body. The spiritual body is a very special body to me. And this part of us can go unrecognized, but feeding it can be truly transformational. Do you allow yourself to contemplate the greater mystery of life? What lifts your soul? If you have not identified what lifts your soul, you may encounter frustration very frequently in your life. And the common reaction tends to be coping with food, that being binge eating, sometimes not eating and neglecting your own needs. I want you to take a look at how you can positively respond by watching sunrise or by watching 
the stars at night or just by listening to the bugs if you do go outside at any moment in your day or just looking at the beautiful blue sky. Now, cultivating this connection makes it really easy to maintain a mindful eating practice and have a more balanced way of being. Personally, I fit this body by swimming in the ocean and connecting with an amazing quantum energy, which brings me a tremendous amount of joy and bliss. I invite you to connect with something greater than yourself, whatever that be, by either watching the sunset, the stars at night, and all that can be deeply nourishing. Now, last but not least, there's that thing called worldly nourishment. It is very easy to get caught up in your day-to-day -day routine and forget about your passions and your sense of purpose. Research shows that cultivating this sense of purpose helps your brain be more resilient and age better. Now, are you aware of your talents and are you actively expressing them in the community or on the world? Or are you using food to stuff these feelings of frustration from not manifesting this area in your life? A common trigger that I tend to see is feeling the lack of meaning in love and work and play. The typical reaction tends to be apathy, lack of taking care of oneself, lack of motivation, and soothing and coping with this feeling of frustration by engaging on unhealthy vices, whether that be eating or drinking. A positive response may be to nourish this worldly body by connecting with a sense of purpose. And I invite you to reflect on how you can manifest your gifts on a day-to-day -day life because these small steps can lead to big changes. As we come up to the end of today's shows, I hope that you have gained a deeper understanding of how our bodies are interconnected and how nourishing each part of ourselves can positively impact other areas of our lives. We've explored how feeding our physical, emotional, creative, spiritual, worldly, and social bodies can lead to a more fulfilling and balanced life. My hope is that you take these insights and incorporate them into your daily routine, creating a life that is deeply nourishing at all levels. Remember, taking small steps towards nourishing each part of ourselves can lead to significant improvements in our overall well-being. To wrap up, here's five key takeaways from today's show. One, become aware of which body is in need and be intentional about nourishing that part of yourself. Two, practice being aware of your hunger level and your fullness level. Three, engage in activities that bring you joy and help you be present in the moment, such as creative pursuits or spending time in nature. This can feed your emotional, creative, and spiritual bodies. Four, cultivate a sense of purpose and make a meaningful, meaningful contribution to your work, family, or community. Five, focus on gratitude and appreciation to set the tone of the day. Remember, taking care of all of our bodies is not a selfish act, but a necessary one. When we're nourished and balanced, we're better equipped to show up fully in our lives. Thank you for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you at my next show. I will leave you with this quote from Miles Kingdom. Knowledge is knowing a tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is not putting it in a fruit salad.